Okay, so the question, can I get the recording after the, the seminar? Uh, yes, you can get the recording after the seminar. Um, because we are recording the seminar, so you can watch it. Mm. Okay, so... Okay, everyone can hear me right? Yeah. Yes, Aini. Yep, yep. Yes, yeah. yes. So uh, I saw that uh, our speaker already here, isn't it? Uh, Hi, Assalamualaikum. Are you here, isn't it? Y yes. Can you hear me? <coughs> yes. Hello? Yes. Okay. Um. Okay. 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 I see Madam Narafiza already here. So, um, before that, uh, I would like to wish all of you Selamat Hari Raya. Okay. Okay, Selamat Hari Raya to everyone here. Okay, so we are going to start our program now. Okay, Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh and good afternoon to Madam Insinyur Technologist Nur Faiza Hamza, our speaker and fellow friends. It is my pleasure to become MC for this webinar. I am Aini Ayuni Binti Mazlan, and on behalf of IEM UTEM, would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you. We appreciate you taking time of your busy schedule to join us today. We hope you will learn a lot. Okay, now here is the link for the attendance. Participant may scan this QR code given and you will have five minutes to scan and fill up the form. So you may scan the QR code given uh, for the attendance. So everyone who free, you can uh, switch on your camera so we can see your face. Wajib ke? Uh, yes, the attendant is uh, wajib untuk diisi. Okay. Kakak, Abang, baby. Kakak, Abang, baby. Everyone can hear me right? Yes, I uh, QR, QR, QR. Okay. Uh, okay. And the link of the attendance. Yeah, Mr. Hadi already shared the link. So you can just click on the link for the attendance.
Okay. So, um, if you already fill up the attendance, give me thumbs up. Okay. Okay, I, I assume that uh, half of you already, half of you already fill up the attendance. So, okay, moving right along. It is now my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker. Her name is Insinyur Technologist Norfaiza Hamza. She's a vice chairman one of Women Engineer Section of IEM 2020 and 2021. And she's worked as senior lecturer at Faculty of Civil Engineering at University Technology Mara, UITM Shah Alam, Selangor. She has a lot of research experience. Her research area includes anistrophic deformation model for progressive damage machining of Hawkesbury sandstone incorporating the inherent mobilized shear strength. And her latest achievement is she got a bronze medal of a e of e contest development competition 2020 at Institute of Continuing Education and Professional Studies, ISAP UITM Shah Alam, in, appro in approbation of technologies in open distance learning ODL through open ended of geotechnical laboratory. So, is this is that is exciting, isn't it? So, ladies and gentlemen, without wasting our time. Please join me in welcoming Madam Insinyur Technologist Norfaiza Nor Nor Hamza to begin our session. So, Madam, you can start now. Okay. Um. Uh, Madam, we can hear. We can't hear your voice. Can you hear me? Yeah, Madam. Yeah. We can't. Yes, Madam. Yes. Yes, 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 madam. So I think they can hear me. Yes, madam, we can hear your voice right now. Okay. And can you see my screen? Yeah, yes. Yep. Okay. So, uh, All right, so basically, um, I hope um, everyone can hear me and can see my uh, uh, screen, okay? Uh, all right, First, firstly, I would like to thank um, the Secretariat for uh, inviting me to deliver um, uh, this talk on uh, road to a professional engineer, all right? I am Nofa Iza Hamza, uh, currently the vice chairman of the Women Engineer section of IEM. Um, all right, so let me begin with um, my content of presentation for today, all right? Um, basically, I'll cover three, uh, three items. Firstly, I introduce myself through my bio data. And then, um, then we go into the main part of this um, sharing session, which is on route to uh, become the professional engineer. And then the last part would be uh, including remarks. Okay. So a bit on me. So basically, I am the SPM 2000 student. Okay. And I obtained my diploma in civil engineering in 2004. And I obtained my bachelor degree in 2007. So my background is on civil engineering. And then I obtained my master's, of, uh, master's degree in geotechnic in 2008. All right. So I had experience learning in Thai, Korea. Um, for my uh, master's dissertation, okay, uh, and these are some of the experience, okay, uh, when I was there. So, actually, uh, my career started, 
all right, on 1st July 2008 as uh, a lecturer in Faculty of Civil Engineering, okay. And then uh, within 2020, uh, 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 2010 to 2011, all right? So I'm having my industrial training at Ranhil Bersekutu, uh, Senian Berhad. So it is a consultant company. So I went there and did my industrial training, okay? And then I returned back to Faculty of Civil Engineering, now as the uh, senior lecturer, okay? So basically, um, if you if you can actually uh, review uh, my my whole ex, uh, life as student until uh, having career, I I didn't go anywhere. All right, unless for this industrial training that bring me um, to Cambodia. So I went this because of joining them. All right, the the, the uh, my colleague. Um, uh, they are having the um, CSR there, okay? And then we went to uh, Indonesia, okay? So here are uh, some of the experience. So we went to uh, Jakarta, okay? Because joining the, the um, environment, okay, as engineer, that let me, um, um, I can say, um, see the world outside of Malaysia, all right? So this is my own uh, route of become professional engineer. So I just want to highlight that in order for you to become professional engineer, each and every one of you will have different path and you will have a unique way of uh, getting the IR, okay? So this is mine. Okay, this is the general one. All right. So in order for you to 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 become professional engineer, so um, basically we have close cooperation between Board of Engineer Malaysia and also IEM. Uh, that having the recognition of member of IEM as a satisfying criteria for professional engineer registration with the Board of Engineer Malaysia. Meaning that if you are joining IEM and you become the member of IEM, okay, so when you are entitled as the member of IEM, then you can be registered as professional engineer. Okay, so how um, for you to become the, this professional engineer? Okay, so firstly, okay, as a student, when when uh, when you are just a student, you want to join IEM, you will be the student member, okay. But once you finish your study, you will you will actually uh, when you graduate, you will become graduate engineer, okay. So this is where from graduate engineer you have to make sure that you registered with the board of engineer, okay. You have to, and this is compulsory. Okay, you have to register with Board of Engineer. It is illegal and it is wrong if you are practicing engineering without registering with the Board of Engineer. Okay, so the first step that you have to remember when you graduate, when you have your scroll, when you have your degree, make sure you register with Board of Engineer. So that is the main thing that you have to do. All right, and then so when you become the graduate engineer and you work either uh, as a in a consultant company, contractor company, or um, as a lecturer like me, or any means of your profession, okay, of engineer, okay. So basically, this is the stage where you are collecting the experience. Okay, so you need to collect experience as minimum about like four years to five years, all right? So let's have that experience before you can apply for your professional engineer, okay? So professional engineer, we have uh, uh, two types. We have PE, okay, professional engineer, and PE with PC. 
PEPC is um, practice, uh, practice um, professional engineer with practicing certificate. Okay, so um, from graduate engineer, you have to become professional engineer first. Then uh, you can apply for professional engineer with practicing certificate. What's the difference? Okay, so the difference is that for PE and PEPC, okay, uh, we are subjected to annual renewal. So every year you have to re renew your license as a professional engineer. Okay. So in order for you to renew your license as a professional engineer, you have to collect the CPD. Okay. So this is the, uh, the CPD requirement is uh, enforced by the Board of Engineer. It is compulsory. Okay. And in from here, from professional engineer, and you want to become a professional engineer with practicing certificate, meaning that uh, for practicing, pra practicing certificate means you able to endorse drawing, okay? Uh, and uh, you, you can set up your own company, all right? For this one, uh, you have to have practicing certificate, okay, whereby it applies license condition, and you have to get this through professional competency exam PCE in order to get to this stage. Okay. All right. So for in my case, okay, in my case, uh, route to become the member of IEM uh, and also professional engineer, I am going uh, this way. Okay, whereby starting with uh, my engineering degree, this is the normal route. Okay, so I am using the normal means. Uh, and the first thing that we have to make sure is that your degree is being accredited. Okay, so you have to make sure that your degree is accredited uh, by uh, the EAC. Okay. So from here, when you ensure that your degree is accredited, okay, so you can actually register as the graduate member, okay, graduate engineer, graduate engineer of uh, board of engineer, okay. So this is the stage where you have to, okay, it is compulsory. Some of you might ask me what's going to happen if you um, are not registering with BEM. Or let's say after you graduate, you just work and you forgot, okay, you forgot to register with board of uh, BEM, board of engineer. All right, so what really happened is that, okay, if you delay your registration, okay, uh, the consequences is first, the, the work that you have done within the time you didn't register, uh, is so-called illegal, okay? So any drawing or any design that you made during that time of period is illegal, okay? So meaning to say, actually, you cannot practice as engineer if you are not registered with BEM, okay? That is by law, okay? The, uh, the impact number two, the consequences number two is that if you don't register with Board of Engineers also, uh, and let's say you registered late after two years, okay? So meaning that the two years experience, okay, that you uh, had obtained will not be counted for your uh, professional um, uh, engineer application, okay? Because they are going to start calculating your experience from the day the BEM, provide you the uh, cert okay the certificate as graduate engineer okay so they are going to calculate your experience starting from that date given by the board of engineer so that's why when you got your scroll when uh, right after you graduate you have your scroll you have your transcript and everything make sure you register first here okay after that uh, your experience and your working your working life your working experience started within this range so this is where you have your training requirement okay so you just can gather all your experience some of you might apply the 
professional engineer, uh, professional engineer registration early, as early as four to five years after being the graduate engineer. Okay, so it depends on your uh, condition, on your um, uh, on your on on yourself whether you have the courage at that time to apply for PE. Okay. So, um, so as you can as you can see, minimum three years relevant work experience. So normally people uh, summarize their experience in a logbook scheme. Okay. Um, so this is stated minimum three years. So that's why they can you know they can just submit uh, at four years of experience. They they try their luck and submit. Okay. So it it. It ups to you whether you you um, uh, when do you want to apply. But uh, in my point of view, I think you should apply when you are confident, okay, and you matured enough to um, justify and act as engineer, okay. Because once you registered for the professional um, engineer, okay. So through IEM, you are going to have professional interview. And then uh, within this professional interview, uh, there are the things that uh, you have to do. Okay, later I will explain in detail all of this step. Eh? But I am explaining briefly uh, the, the, the route that uh, uh, I did. Okay. So uh, I had my interview, I had my exam at this stage, and uh, when I passed, so I am uh, has um, uh, given me corporate member. Okay, so from here, uh, when they award me the corporate member of I am, this is um, when you get member of I am, so you can transfer to the um, uh, PE. Okay, so um, this is where I have my PE. Okay, uh, so for those um, in, from this stage to this stage, okay, so the compulsory part where I have to attend uh, the there are talks by IEM. Okay, those uh, knowledge you have to take your own effort. Okay, to gather extra information because. There are elements that you have to fulfill <clears throat> on um, uh, ethics, okay, uh, code of conduct, uh, and so on. Later, I'll explain uh, in further uh, slide, okay. All right. So this is my main presentation uh, on the route to become member of IEM and also professional engineer. <clears throat> Let me uh, start with the um, introduction to IEM. For those of you, I think um, since IEM student chapter contacted me, meaning that uh, you have <coughs> person representative from IEM. Okay. So briefly, IEM is established in 1959. Okay. And the primary function of IEM to pro is to promote and advance the science and profession of engineering in any or all of its discipline and to facilitate the exchange of information and ideas relating, related to uh, engineering. All right, so, <clears throat> so the Institution of Engineering Malaysia, commonly known as IEM. So the institution is a professional learned society in 1959 and registered with the Registrar of Societies. So I am adalah badan berdaftar. Eh? So our objective is to promote and advance the science and profession of all aspects of engineering. So under I am, there are semua jenis yang kita sebut berkaitan dengan engineering. So ada civil, ada mechanical, ada electrical. Semua, semua, semua you boleh, <coughs> if you <coughs> if you come to IEM, you akan berkenalan dan you akan berjumpa dengan uh, ramai atau pelbagai jenis uh, engineer. Okay. Alright. 
So IEM aims to achieve the objective by okay so uh, antara um, target IEM tu kita kita nak capai dengan cara uh, raising the status and further advancing the interest of engineering profession promoting honest practice discouraging malpractice and settling dispute points of practice and ethic encouraging the stu the study of engineering collecting and disseminating engineering information and improving the general and technical knowledge of persons engaged in profession. So kita dekat IEM memang kita encourage eh, untuk uh, apa uh, untuk you further study and untuk you share knowledge okay. So it is a place where you meet people and you you are uh, actually uh, gather apa gather the information okay kadang-kadang you ada problem you meet uh, apa meet new people okay they actually indirectly can help you okay and then by initiating and promoting in, uh, improvement in legislation and its administ administration by uh, deputation submission and representation so iem is kind of a big uh, institution Okay, so dia ada banyak function, dia ada banyak uh, apa event yang berlaku dalam dalam IEM sendiri, yang mana um, all of that is um, apa di digerakkan oleh engineer sendiri. Semua yang masuk IEM adalah engineer, okay, graduate engineer, professional engineer. So um, apa yang kita buat dalam IEM So semuanya semua program digerakkan oleh engineer tu sendiri. Okay. So dalam IEM we have different we have various type of membership. We have student member, we have associate member, affiliate uh, member, incorporated member, graduate member, companion, we have member MIEM eh, member of IEM. We have senior member, we have fellow member, we have honorary member. Okay, so um, biasanya um, uh, kalau you dapat member ni kat sini upgrading of experience engineer leading to professional engineer status. So kalau you dapat jadi member of IEM, dia memang automatically uh, you register dengan board of engineer, dia akan um, admit you as the professional engineer. Okay, uh, so um, So saya dulu pernah menjadi student member. So daripada student member saya menjadi graduate member. Okay. So graduate member ni open to all practicing engineer registered with BEM. Sebab tu saya encourage bila you dah ada degree. So make sure you uh, registered dengan IEM. So you uh, akan jadi graduate member lah. Okay. Uh, so this is this is the different type of membership that we have in IEM. Okay. So so far total of membership as April 2021 we have about uh, 47,143 members including the student. Okay. Ini bilangan uh, ahli yang mendaftar di IEM. Okay. So uh, untuk membership Great D, okay. Kalau student, you akan ada this kind of ah uh, this type of ah uh, card lah, okay. Ah uh, ni student great, okay. Ah uh, so ah uh, kita ada seramai dua puluh lima ribu student, okay. And then bila you upgrade, you jadi graduate, eh, graduate of IEM. Dekat uh, sekarang for the time being, um graduate IEM ada dalam 9,000. Okay. And member of IEM, uh, so yang mana professional engineer dan ke atas, dia berada dalam group member ni. So member of IEM is about 11K. Okay. Fellow dalam 700 plus. Okay. 775. Okay. So this is where uh, how you apa kita panggil grow as engineer 
towards time. Okay. Uh, so, lebih you ke sini, uh, maksudnya lebih banyaklah pengalaman you dalam uh, bidang engineering ni. Alright, so, uh, but we have other grades as well. Distinguished Honorary Fellow, Honorary Fellow, Honorary Member, Incorporated Member, every uh, lead member and associate member. And then, uh, so this is actually the statistic of um, the membership grade as uh, April 2021. So, daripada 47,000 tu, inilah distribution dia. Okay. So, kalau you tengok kekuatan IEM ni datang daripada student. Sebab 25,000 keahlian adalah daripada pelajar. Okay, so kita ada ramai pelajar engineering sebenarnya. Alright, uh, and IEM we have uh, various branch. Kita ada IEM dekat Kedah Perlis, IEM Penang, IEM Terengganu, IEM Perak, IEM Miri, Sabah, IEM Melaka, so IEM Southern, IEM Sarawak, IEM Pahang, IEM Negeri Sembilan, IEM Kelantan. Okay. So untuk you dekat UTEM, so the closest adalah IEM Melaka. Okay. Alright. Uh, and under, um, dalam IEM we have different technical division. Okay. So under big uh, apa roof of IEM kita ada civil engineering. So civil related. So kita ada civil and structural. Kita ada geotechnical. Kita ada water resources, highway and transportation, environmental, tunneling and underground space and so on. Dan untuk electrical related, dia ada electrical, dia ada electronic. For mechanical related, kita ada mechanical, building services, oil, gas and mining, marine and naval architecture. For others, ada chemical, ada engineering education, ada project management, ada agricultural and food. And we also have SIG, special interest group. Dalam information and communication technology, consulting engineer, public sector engineer, seniors and urban engineering development. So sekarang ni macam-macam under IEM, ada yang uh, terbaru nak usulkan on um, uh, apa uh, drone, okay ada adalah macam-macam, okay. So yes. Um, IEM section, okay, under the roof. So, kita ada YES, which is uh, IEM Young Engineer section. So, uh, yang ini yang uh, student akan uh, directly under this, eh, IEM Young Engineer section. And also, uh, uh, student dan juga um, sebelum you, uh, I mean, graduate, graduate member akan under YES ni. Okay. And also we have IEM Women Engineer Section. So bila you registered dengan uh, IEM, kalau uh, any one of you adalah female, so uh, uh, and woman, you automatic you adalah woman uh, engineers, and you are part of this. Okay. So apa kelebihan you join IEM? Okay. So basically. So these are services that being provided by IEM. Number one, kita ada courses and training. Bila you join IEM, kita akan ada course, kita ada training. So you akan jadi the first um, apa to know and get the updated uh, information on what happened. <coughs> and if you uh, actively join IEM, uh, with their apa, group works, some of the invitation you boleh pergi courses dengan training ni even for free. Okay, sebab dia bagi free seating untuk certain uh, program. Okay, so dia ada benefit dia. Okay, tapi yang paling utama, satu kalau you jadi member, courses ni dia ada rate uh, for member dengan bukan member. So biasanya if you are member, so the courses rate would be cheaper. Okay. Ha, ni um, objek, apa dia punya uh, advantage number one. Yang kedua dia ada educational and social activities. So biasanya um, under setiap sub division atau under women engineer section atau under yes, 
So biasanya dia ada program yang dia jalankan sendiri. Dia ada aktiviti dia. Okay. So sama ada berbentuk educational atau social activity. Contohnya dia buat my, uh, macam yes uh, competition, futsal, ada um, lawan musim lawan badminton. Okay. So among the those engineers, they are creating this. Okay, ada social activities. Women engineer. So, kita pun ada conduct social activities. Um, selalunya um, kita buat um, apa activity um, charity. Okay, and we also engage with uh, NGO. So, ada banyak uh, activity yang kita conduct. So, kalau you... Um, be part of IEM, you will actually be invited to join uh, this uh, kind of activity. Okay. And then number three, publication. Okay. So, um, IEM juga ada sediakan platform untuk publication. Sama ada you nak directly um, uh, apa, um, uh, apa do your Uh, publication melalui uh, platform IEM sendiri we have uh, our bulletin and journal of IEM okay ataupun dia orang sendiri ada sediakan uh, dana untuk you publish publication okay uh, so yang ini number three okay number four library so dekat IEM kita ada library physical library Um, uh, and I I believe they are moving to the digital uh, library as well So, sesiapa yang menjadi member I, uh, IEM You can uh, apa fully utilize the library Okay, so yang bagus dia bila Kalau you jadi member uh, Contohnya you nak certain standard Okay, uh, by JKR by uh, contohnya BS atau Eurocode yang you nak refer okay? um, kalau you nak beli mahal so uh, might as well you refer dekat library IEM okay? uh, so ni adalah great advantage um, and especially last time masa saya jadi junior atau graduate engineer bila saya nak buat uh, reference okay? nak cari certain data so I refer to this uh, apa Uh, library service okay. and then service yang kelima adalah networking and contact so yang ini sangatlah uh, beneficial Alright, biasanya IEM dia akan provide um, event uh, dan um, they have the contact of uh, various people okay. uh, engineers different background so kalau kita, you actively join uh, with all those activities, you akan ada networking. You akan kenal ramai orang, you akan ada contact uh, different people uh, dan bukan sekadar dalam you punya uh, contact. Okay, not, let's say you are civil, you kawan dengan orang civil sahaja, tak. Okay, bila you datang IEM, you akan kenal lebih ramai orang, they have different expertise, they have different experience. So, in a way, you akan uh, you akan lebih appreciate, uh, you akan tahu lebih banyak okay, information dan kenal lebih ramai orang. Okay, and then uh, uh, other services would be assistance in uh, finance and technical. So, yang ni pun uh, dia ada. Um, uh, dalam bentuk finance and technical to IEM members okay so basically these are six um, uh, main services provided by the IEM okay so sekarang ni uh, of course uh, most of you would uh, apa, uh, you dekat stage uh, student okay so you want to know the route to become the member of IEM and PE Okay, so yang first kali only student pursuing engineering degree or diploma can become student member of IEM. Okay, so I believe um, yang daripada UTEM, uh, I've been told that you are pursuing your uh, engineering degree. Okay, so you are entitled to become the student member. Okay. 
So as the student member, what are the benefits? Number one, networking with practicing engineer. Okay. Number two, you have technical talk, courses and technical visit. Okay, sekarang ni kalau tak boleh uh, attend this technical visit, they have virtual technical visit. Okay. And then we have potential industrial training attachment. So IEM keeps a list of organization for industrial training for student member. So kalau kata dekat UTEM, you nak um, apa, sesiapa yang nak attend LI, nak buat industrial training, tapi tak tahu ke mana. So you, actually you can refer to IEM and try to get the list of organization that asking and open uh, opportunities for industrial training. Okay, and then uh, we also have potential future job employment. Okay, so selalunya engineer uh, dan certain-certain company, they like to advertise the job employment uh, through IEM. Alright, um, okay. Um, yang tadi tu as a student member, yang ini as member of IEM. So kalau you dah jadi member of IEM, So, antara benefit dia adalah, of course, you have the networking group among engineer. Okay. And then, uh, of course, you are able to attend technical talks, seminar, courses and technical visit. And also, as additional, because you are already member of IEM, you can attend professional development program, PDP. Okay. And you can actually uh, give talks on the route to become the prof professional engineer and in time you can attend continuing professional development and collecting the CPD. Okay, so you can refer this uh, in the web portal of IEM www.myiem.org.my okay. And the benefit of becoming the member, so every year, okay, the IEM will uh, provide you with this IEM merchant discount program, okay. So we have this loyalty card. Uh, contohnya, uh, macam tahun 2021 ni, we have this automotive um, uh, apa, uh, rebate, okay. So we you, you will get rebate. Kalau you beli kereta dengan Mercedes-Benz, BMW, Audi, Volvo, uh, Renault, Subaru. So this is tahun 2021. Masa 2020, I think the list of um, company ni uh, different. Okay, so it depends. Uh, buyer tu um, uh, apa various company yang akan ada uh, offer this kind of rebate. Okay. And then untuk health and fitness, for those yang interested uh, joining celebrity fitness and fitness first, okay. So you can also use this uh, discount, uh, merchant discount program. Untuk fashion ada World of Sport, Red Wings, Kiban and Wolverine, okay. And then uh, for leisure, uh, Ampang Super Bowl yang main bowling pun boleh dapat discount. And then for those um, apa pakai spec optical uh, dekat focus point menara optometry and uh, insurance so you can actually get discount. Untuk insurance uh, Zurich General Insurance and AON uh, brokers offer um, discount through IEM. Okay. So yang ini maksudnya kalau you ada loyalty card ni uh, then you can use this and get discount uh, for this uh, item for that year. Okay so saya nak beritahu yang every year uh, ada different company and different kind of um, apa uh, discount program ni. Alright so route to become member of IEM and PE with uh, Board of Engineer Malaysia. Okay. So, saya tekankan kat sini. Okay. So, first kali you have to make sure that you are the Board of Engineer graduate engineer. Okay. All engineering in Malaysia. Okay. Tak kira lah you mechanical ke, you um, electrical ke, you civil ke, any uh, engineering in Malaysia eh. 
sebab kita tertakluk under akta ni so the engineering profession in Malaysia is regulated by the registration of engineer act 1967 revised in 1974 87 89 2002 2007 2015 okey so um, kita tertakluk kepada akta okey profession engineer ni okey so uh, you have to understand the role uh, antara BEM dengan IEM. BEM ni adalah uh, regulatory body okay, uh, for engineering practice. Dia adalah badan uh, yang 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 berkuasa okay. uh, dan BEM uh, is set up by the Malaysian government under the Registration of Engineer Act 1967 to administer and to enforce the REA and its provisions to protect public interest. Okay, so ini yang you kena faham tentang BEM. Okay, so BEM ni di di uh, ditubuhkan, okay, Uh, untuk administer and enforce peraturan-peraturan um, uh, ni eh, Registration of Engineer Act ni okay, So kita tertakluk kepada akta ni So only graduate engineer uh, So kena faham ni eh, and Only graduate engineers and professional engineers Registered with the Board of Engineer Malaysia BEM Are allowed to practice engineering in Malaysia Okay, so you kena faham kalau you jadi graduate engineer, you mesti berdaftar. You tak boleh tak berdaftar. Benda ni ada dalam akta. Kena buat. Okay, so the REA mandates engineering graduate to register with BEM as a graduate engineer upon graduation. So kita memang, that's why saya berkali-kali highlight, uh, you must register uh, bila you graduate. Okay, ha, sebab ini adalah uh, under akta ni eh, Registration of Engineers Act 1967. Okay, um, uh, Board of Engineer Malaysia, okay, Section 7, to, uh, kurungan 2, kurungan A, a graduate engineer who is registered with the board may subject to Section 8 take up employment which require him to perform professional engineering services. Okay. Uh, so, dekat section 24, dalam kurungan H, ada penalty. Yeah. Any person, sole uh, proprietorship, partnership or body corporate who contravenes section 7 or 8 or subsection uh, 7A, 24A, 24B ni yeah. Shall be guilty of an offence and shall and conviction be liable to a fine not exceeding 50,000 ringgit or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding three years or to both. Maksudnya, uh, yang ni yang saya kata kalau you practice sebagai jurutera tapi you tidak mendaftar dengan board, so dia ada penalti yang boleh dikenakan. So maksudnya... Tak boleh, tak, tak boleh illegally um, apa tidak mendaftar. Okay, so ini uh, uh, perkara yang uh, you kena aware. Dan ini tak ada kaitan dengan IEM. Okay, ini dengan Board of Engineer. Dia 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 mewajibkan. Okay, melalui akta ni. Alright. Uh, yang itu akta under board tu semua orang kena fulfill, kena buat. Alright. But here this is uh, the IEM. Okay, under IEM, IEM ni uh, satu institution, okay, uh, satu pertubuhan profesional, okay, yang ditubuhkan oleh, uh, yang meng meng mengumpul atau menggabungkan semua engineer under one roof. Okay, so IEM is a learned society where engineers of various disciplines in every sector of economic activities come together for mutual helpfulness and sharing of experience and technologies. Okay, and IEM work closely with BEM to enhance the status of engineers in the society. So sebenarnya IEM ni, kita work closely, kita um, uh, ada a very great um, apa relationship dengan 
uh, board of engineer so kita kita follow apa yang di regulate by board of engineer malaysia okay and uh, the establish uh, social linkage between engineer and help young engineer to establish themselves in their track career so ini apa yang iem buat so iem kalau you as junior engineer, you datang dekat IEM, dekat sinilah tempat you gather with the seniors with uh, and expand your networking. So in general, a learned institution of practicing engineers in Malaysia for networking, technical learning and socializing. Okay, in IEM. So, um, and when, when you want to register with Board of Engineer Malaysia, Okay, so uh, bila you uh, apa, register dengan Board of Engineer BEM, so kita ada different kat sini ya, eh. uh, first graduate engineer. So you um, uh, dikenali dengan grad engineer lah. Okay, and then kalau you register dengan Board of Engineer sebagai professional engineer, okay, so you akan carry the title of IR, Ataupun you can put the abbreviation PH, Professional Engineering, after his name. So, dekat belakang nama, kita letak PH ni. Okay. So, selain daripada ni, kita ada juga accredited checker. Kita ada juga engineering technologies, engineering tech ni ya. Eh. ENG tech. So, engineering technologies, dia ada degree dalam engineering technologies. Okay. And then Inspector of Work IOW. So ni antara um, yang you boleh uh, register dan apply lah melalui Board of Engineer. So you can refer all of this melalui laman web www.bem.org.my. Okay. So you have to know that the close cooperation between BEM and IEM has resulted in the recognition of I, uh, of the member of IEM as satisfying the criteria for PH registration with BEM. So, sesiapa yang through IEM, you dapat jadi member of IEM ni, you uh, boleh register sebagai professional engineer. So, untuk dapat member of IEM, of course, there are the criteria uh, yang you kena penuhi lah. So, ni yang saya explain tadi laluan normal route yang um, normally people go through lah. So, kalau you adalah foreign engineer, maksudnya you dari um, ataupun you punya degree tu adalah unrecognized. Okay. Um, so, laluan dia a bit different sikit. Okay. Or some of you might uh, need to further having master in engineering. Okay, and become the IEM graduate member, baru you boleh lalu uh, the the route like the others. Okay, so um, so yang ini yang uh, saya explain tadi, untuk foreign professional can only practice in Malaysia with several condition, including undergoing interview and examination. So Uh, in order for you to get PE ni, so kita kita ada, uh, dia ada kriteria dia, okay, yang yang kita kena fulfill. So, you have to make sure, uh, bila you apply, dia kita akan semak sama ada you, uh, kelayakan you tu uh, sufficient ke tidak untuk you take exam, okay, and interview. Alright, so Malaysian Public and Private Universities Engineering Programs are accredited by Engineering Accreditation Council, EAC. Okay, so saya percaya B, uh, UTEM uh, adalah under um, uh, one of the accredited engineering degree, maksudnya degree yang 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 uh, di-offer di UTEM seharusnya, okay, sepatutnya uh, being accredited lah by uh, EAC. Okay, uh, so um, EAC ni apa? Okay, EAC ni adalah Accreditation of Engineering Program by Universities in Malaysia is established by Engineering Accreditation Council, EAC, on a program content review and audit basis. So EAC ni yang akan audit program engineering yang di-offer oleh universiti-universiti yang ada di Malaysia. 
Okay, so EAC ni adalah satu badan yang memantau program tu. Sama ada, sama ada program itu uh, valid dan um, apa on 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 par with the others. Okay, layak untuk diperakukan degree tersebut. Alright, so uh, in order for you to um, become member of IEM and professional uh, engineer, okay, you have to make sure EAC, you kena tahulah EAC, Engineering Accreditation Council, is the body delegated by BEM for accreditation of engineering degree. So sebenarnya EAC ni pun dia mendapat arahan daripada Board of Engineer Malaysia. Okay. So member dekat EAC ni um, ada they have a representative from BEM, dia ada representative from IEM, dia ada representative from MQA Malaysian Qualification Agency and also Public Services Department atau JPA Jabatan Perkhidmatan Awam Malaysia. So semua pihak ni sebenarnya uh, ada dalam EAC. Okay. So um, kenapa program you kena uh, di accredited by EAC? The objective of accreditation is to ensure that graduate of the accredited engineering program satisfy the minimum academic requirement for registration as a graduate engineer with Board of Engineer Malaysia and also for admission to graduate membership of Institution of Engineer Malaysia. So kita nak pastikan bila you register, walaupun you dari UTEM, uh, contohnya saya daripada University X di Malaysia, okay? so University UTEM ke, University X ke, bila you mendaftar dengan Board of Engineer, you mendaftar dengan IEM, daripada mana pun ter, uh, apa you gain your your degree you telah mencapai minimum requirement sebagai pemegang uh, degree holder tu okey you kena meet this minimum okey uh, kalau lebih lebih baiklah okey tapi uh, uh, this is the purpose EAC ni yang memastikan perkara tu okey So contoh foreign university yang dinyatakan kalau universiti tu dari UK, USA, Australia. Okay so dia 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 um, being accredited by their respective engineering council or bodies. Okay so basically they have their own uh, apa uh, bodies lah okay yang yang memantau tu. So yang ini laluan untuk foreign engineer membership. So I believe that uh, untuk uh, dekat UTEM mungkin saya tak perlu explain lah untuk foreign engineer membership. Okay. Uh, and then uh, tapi yang uh, I I just leave it this slide. Maksudnya kalau kalau ada orang tanya dekat you lah. Maknanya kalau dia daripada universiti luar negara boleh tak jadi member? Boleh. Jawapan dia boleh. Okay, boleh tetapi um, dia ada dia punya different term lah kat sini. Okay, uh, dia akan jadi corporate member, dia akan jadi incorporated member. Okay, uh, so how about when we have unrecognized degree? Uh, kita, kita Contohnya dia belajar dekat negara, negara apa eh, negara, kita tak tahulah negara apa. Tapi uh, the degree is unrecognized. Maksudnya tidak di-accredited okay, by EAC. So contoh uh, it's from local university tapi unaccredited engineering program by EAC atau dari foreign university <coughs> tapi dia tidak under Washington Accord University atau tak ada dalam BEM list of country uh, which accredited tu. Eh. Dia tak ada yang EAC equivalent tu. So kalau kes-kes yang macam ni um, Basically, uh, dia akan lalui this stage, eh? all unrecognized engineering degree need further learning or top up in order uh, for the degree to be acceptable by BEM. Okay, so BEM yang tetapkan ni, so dia kena top up atau further learning ni by uh, doing the master's degree in engineering by taught course. Okay. An unrecognized engineering degree holder can join IEM as incorporated member. Okay, so kalau you dah ada ni, so you boleh join IEM as incorporated member. 
Okay, so um, dekat sini ada Engineering Competency Development, ECD. So, maksudnya bila you <coughs> dah uh, registered dengan uh, IM, uh, dengan board. Okay, so actually within the time tu kita akan uh, having this Engineering Competency Development. Kita kumpul ECD ni. Okay. So, it is for graduate engineer, not having a professional engineer PE of same discipline within the organization. So, uh, biasanya kita nominate a mentor. Mentor you kenalah. Masa you graduate engineer, okay, before you nak apply, nak jadi PE tu. So, you kena kumpul lah uh, competency development ni, ECD ni, pengalaman. Okay. So, apa you perlu buat, you nominate a mentor. Mentor ni mestilah ada PE. Okay. Ada PE of same discipline. Maksudnya, kalau you civil, dia pun civil lah macam tu. You jangan ambil mentor, you civil tapi mentor you mechanical. Ha, yang tu tak boleh. Okay. Dia mesti sama disiplin. From other organisation, <coughs> prefer, uh, preferably same industry but not mandatory. So, tak semestinya. So kita, dia cakap pasal industri ni uh, Kalau boleh dia nak yang sama lah Maksudnya Kalau dia buat uh, Macam contoh saya bagi dalam civil eh, Sebab civil besar Ada structure, ada geotech So kalau saya, saya fokus dalam geotech Saya punya mentor tu shoot geotech jugalah Preferable dalam industri yang sama Kalau dia dalam bidang yang lain Dia bukanlah tak boleh Tapi <coughs> dia tak dia tak apa tak prefer okay ah so dia prefer dalam industri yang tak mentor can obtain from IEM graduate member having access of pool of PE to choose from so melalui IEM so kita ada ramai mentor yang berdaftar yang you boleh actually refer to okay so untuk IEM requirement Okay, so yang ini kalau you nak apply melalui IEM, so dia ada requirement yang kita penuhi which is uh, first you kena conduct professional interview. <coughs> okay, professional interview ni tujuan dia kita nak tengok <coughs> you punya professional experiences. So graduates are required to obtain professional experience in planning, design, execution or management of engineering work ataupun uh, engineering research of teaching uh, or the teaching of engineering. So, de dekat sini diguna perkataan or eh. So, mana-mana. So, at least three years before eligible to apply for corporate membership of IEM and subsequent professional engineer registration with BEM. Okay. So, Uh, bila you um, apply untuk professional experience tu untuk ni contoh untuk civil engineering uh, civil engineering candidate must obtain professional experience sekurang-kurangnya minimum 12 bulan untuk site experience dan juga minimum 12 bulan untuk design experience so you kena ada sekurang-kurangnya ni uh, setahun uh, site experience setahun design experience Okay, <coughs> so yang ini <coughs> untuk civil and for other engineering untuk electrical dia ada minimum 6 month of site experience and minimum 12 month of design experience. Untuk mechanical engineering minimum 12 months of uh, site experience and minimum 6 months of design experience. Untuk electronic engineering so minimum 12 months of site experience and minimum 6 months of design experience. Untuk chemical engineering, minimum 6 months of both sides experience and design experience. Okay, so yang ini yang lain-lain. Okay. And untuk professional experience, graduate with international work experience. Oh, yang ini kalau yang daripada luar, eh, dia mestilah kerja-kerja uh, um, yang dia buat, mestilah certified by professional engineer. Okay. Uh, is or is equivalent of respective country and countersigned by a local mem, uh, MI, EM atau uh, local PE, professional engineer. 
usually the current employer. So BEM require the candidate to have gained at least one year local working experience. So the kalau yang international work experience, bila dia nak apply melalui IEM ni, so dia kena ada satu tahun uh, pengalaman uh, praktis di dalam negara. Okay. So uh, nowadays uh, the uh, application tu um, of of the professional engineering uh, dia based apa uh, berdasarkan outcome based PI, okay. So outcome based PI ni um, adalah ada, ada dua part, documentary review dan juga in person assessment, okay. So satu ni disediakan dokumen, okay. So documentary documentary review of competency evidence to assess applicant eligibility and readiness for professional interview. So you akan submit the document, okay? And then part two adalah in person assessment of candidate that assists of a face to face oral interview as well as writing to essay. So selepas dia overview you punya permohonan, okay, you gather all your experience, you fulfill lah dia punya borang-borang tu semua, you submit, so akan ada pihak yang review document you. Okay, so tu part yang pertama. Part yang kedua ada in-person assessment. You akan dikendaki hadir for interview, ada oral interview and also uh, ada menjawab soalan lah, uh, essay. Okay. So instead of focusing mainly on technical aspect, this method has a more holistic approach in assessing competence on underpinning knowledge and understanding of a branch or sub-branch of engineering and um, to assess on the skill in design and development of solution to engineering problem. And then at the same time, looking at the people skill, management, leadership, as well as communication and interpersonal, interpersonal skill, And then kita tengok juga attitude and professional commitment. Okay, so biasanya interviewer ni bila dia, bila you apply for PE, dia boleh tengok daripada cara you jawab tu, you dah cukup mecut ke tidak? Cara you jawab tu cukup professional ke tak? Sebab nak jadi professional engineer, you kena professional. Okay, so each candidate has unique work experience because of the nature of job. Okay, so sebab tu bila you prepare documentation untuk apply PE ni, dia tak sama untuk semua orang. Even dalam company yang sama pun bila nak apply tu sebab experience tiap-tiap orang lain-lain. Okay, so nak apply pun lain-lain lah. Okay, most candidate are able to develop an acceptable or satisfactory level of attainment in the majority of competency element. So nature of work sometimes make candidate lacking in a few competency element but they can still pass PI if they are good in most of other element. Okay so uh, maksud dia kat sini kadang-kadang uh, nature of work uh, you uh, menyebabkan you tak uh, apa you lack dekat certain contohnya you kerja dekat contractor company. So dekat contractor company You management oh memang bagus. Um, uh, you punya apa um, apa elemen-elemen yang lain uh, site supervision tak ada masalah sebab you kerja kontraktor. Tapi mungkin you kurang elemen design sebab you tak buat kerja design sendiri. Ha, okay, so uh, kat sinilah yang dia, dia tunjukkan kalau kita pakai uh, cara ni walaupun you kurang dekat part tu you still boleh pass sebab you ada elemen lain yang boleh support you. Okay. So that's why bila you apply, you can make sure that you meet the target of each um, requirement uh, stated. Okay. And this assessment method is both, uh, is both uh, competence based and evidence based with the following features okay we have uh, measured the knowledge understanding skill and professional attitude necessary for pi candidate to to perform effectively so yang ni kita tengok in term of your competence competence okay and then we use rubric so uh, panel tu bila dia assess you tu satu dia nak tengok competence you tu dia tengok dia measure dia dia, dia tengok 
you punya need knowledge, you punya laporan tu lah. Okay. You punya understanding, you punya skill. Okay. And then dia ada rubrik. Okay. Use rubrik to differentiate competence level. So maksudnya ada orang dalam bidang tu uh, kompetensi dia tinggi. Okay, so you kalau kompetensi dia tinggi atau dia sangat bagus dekat elemen tu, kita award dekat bahagian tu. Tapi untuk certain elemen, dia mungkin average, dia bukanlah. Uh, so you you boleh guna, dia ada rubrik. Okay, to differentiate the competence level. So and it's uh, apa, it gives clear assessment criteria. Okay, and then it use standard competency descriptor as a yardstick to minimize uh, individual subjectivity. Okay, so uh, dia dia lebih uh, objektif lah. Okay, and award competence level based on the evidence demonstrated by PI candidate. So kita nak bagi tahu uh, competence level tu kita lihat evidence yang disertakan dalam laporan. Okay, so kalau ini bermakna kalau contoh kita nak kata dia tak bagus tu berdasarkan apa? Sebab semuanya evidence based. Dia menunjukkan bukti yang dia terlibat dalam projek ni. Dalam projek sekian. So it's all evidence based. So agak susah untuk panel simply say that you are not competent. Okay, so uh, approach yang ni dia lebih 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 objektif lah dan, dan lebih bagus sebab dia evidence based. Okay, so what you need to do uh, for the professional interview, you have to, uh, in order for you uh, to get the PE, so you need to apply for MIEM, submit the application form, okay, and then make payment to attend the in professional interview, alright, untuk member IEM, so uh, interview fee 200, processing fee 100. Tapi kalau you bukan member, so uh, interview fee you uh, 300, processing fee 100. Okay, yang ini untuk, ni baru nak attend interview eh, baru nak mohon, belum jadi lagi. Okay, uh, so selepas you dah lalui proses interview, dah take exam, dah lepas apa semua, upon successful, lepas tu you kena make payment lagi. Make payment for membership application. So yang ini, sama ada uh, you want to uh, transfer IEM uh, apa uh, kalau you bersama dengan IEM lah for uh, more than two years uh, so this is your fees 100 plus 100 plus 155 155 ni annual fee ya yeah. and then tapi kalau you um, less than two years okay so um, you tra uh, nak transfer membership application tu dia mahal sikit 250 okay and then uh, dia ada election uh, uh, kalau buy election ya, eh, so you kena bayar 350 100 and uh, 155 okay so ini adalah uh, different payment lah bergantung kepada the type of membership you Okay, so requirement, apa yang diperlukan untuk you apply, okay, you kena submit uh, borang. So, ada borang IMPI A100, A300, A401. So, ada different-different borang kat sini, ada PI Annex A401 dengan PI C300. So, ada lima um, apa form yang you kena isi, okay, upon your submission. And then you have to submit a technical report detailing of execution of project undertaken. Uh, so technical report ni you select lah daripada banyak-banyak kerja yang you buat, you 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 report project yang very close to you, yang comprehensive, yang uh, that you you wish to 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 show to the panel. Okay. Sediakan dua set to be submitted together with the application form. So, dokumen yang you hantar semua ni lah yang akan di-review oleh panel daripada panel uh, yang dilantik oleh Board of Engineer tu dia akan uh, tentukan sama ada you layak menduduki uh, exam atau tidak. Kalau tak layak, dia akan return semula dan dia akan cakap uh, dia minta you improve dekat mana-dekat mana. So, you might need some time, ambil beberapa masa untuk penuhi section yang dinyatakan tak cukup tu. 
Okay. Tapi kalau dah cukup, dia akan keluarkan surat panggilan interview. So you have to attend interview. And then you have to write two sets of essay. So essay ni pula dia um, ada ada uh, on two part. Ada number one, submitted technical report. So you hantar technical report ni. So akan ada soalan essay daripada technical report you tu. Okay. And then another one, ada soalan essay juga on regulation on professional conduct. Okay. So uh, listed topik ni dia ada senarai dia You boleh pergi dekat website untuk tengok professional conduct Sama ada dekat BEM atau IEM ada listed topik ni Okay so dia bukanlah soalan terkejut-terkejut ke tak ada Apa yang you hantar, apa yang ni um, uh, Yang sepatutnya okay uh, you tahu uh, is all there Okay Alright, so untuk report, uh, dekat sini ada detailing of the work experience. So tujuan report you tu, uh, reports on training and work experience to be verified or certified by PE. So make sure report yang you prepare tu um, mesti ada PE verified eh, atau certified. Uh, must be a PE of same discipline applied. Within the organization. So kalau you bekerja dekat company A, make sure lah dekat company A tu ada PE. Okay, professional engineer yang akan endorse experience you tu. Okay, sebab dia akan query juga. Kalau you bekerja dekat company A, company A tak ada professional engineer. Alih-alih you apply, orang daripada tah mana-mana sign you punya PE, uh, uh, sign you punya form. Dengan PE tu, dia akan tanyalah PE ni, PE dari mana yang verify kerja-kerja you ni. Ha, macam tu. Okay. Ha, so, yang ni yang you kena make sure lah. And as an alternative to maintain logbook under the Engineering Competency Development, ECD, if the graduate is not supervised by a professional engineer PE or the same or related engineering discipline. So, kalau ini a case yang you Pastikan uh, bila you kerja, you ada PE yang boleh endorse kerja you tu. Kalau tak ada, kalau tak ada, you buat logbook uh, under uh, ECD ni lah. Okay, you prepare ECD, uh, logbook under ECD. So, bila you apply, you boleh sertakan logbook ni. Alright, so the submission of the report uh, is a document on the particular project. Uh, undertaken within the engineering career so make sure dia dalam um, apa uh, dalam masa you bekerja itulah okey dan report tu kenalah verified and certified by PE drawing and other documents to be verified or certified by PE juga so drawing ke atau apa-apa dokumen yang you sertakan dalam report you tu mestilah ada PE yang sign yang Uh, mengverify you buat kerja tu. Okay, mesti ya. Eh? It, it, it is a must. Professional interview and essay writing, what being assessed. So basically they are assessing the sound understanding of engineering knowledge, capacity to accept professional responsibilities, ability to communicate and make effective presentation. Okay, so ini antara yang yang uh, kita assess dekat candidate lah. Okay, and semasa writing essay, so ada two essay within one and a half hours each. And then there ada section A on candidate document submission, ada section B on one of the 13 regulation on professional conduct topics or question. So soalan <coughs> professional conduct ni, Memang ada eh, dekat website, you boleh tengok. So, apa objektif uh, having this essay writing? So, objektif is to test candidate knowledge to communicate well in language as well as to gather his or her thought in a clear and concise manner. Okay. So, tujuan dia kenapa kita nak ada essay ni uh, sebab dia nak pastikan you adalah orang yang betul uh, yang apply permohonan professional engineer tu. Okay, dan you memiliki um, the knowledge and you adalah orangnya dan you able to communicate. Uh, that That is basically the purpose. Okay. 
So this is the uh, BEM requirement untuk competency exam. So yang ini um, kalau melalui um, BEM, the requirement you have to uh, pass PAE uh, through BEM atau PI through IEM. So kita ada dua laluan ni lah. Okay. So encourage to attend minimum 60 hours of professional development program PDP untuk graduate engineer and attend professional competency exam if PE wish to become a submitting person. Okay, so yang ini professional competency exam ni untuk PE lah, professional engineer nak further. Okay, uh, tapi untuk PDP, graduate engineer are highly encouraged to attend. So dulu saya memang attend lah ni, 60 hours uh, PDP ni, <coughs> 12 hours untuk uh, OHS, OSH and environment, okay, safety and health ni, okay, and then uh, 12 hours untuk engineering management, and then another 12 hours untuk code of ethics, and then edit untuk additional learning, so ada 24 hours courses or seminar on talks in the engineering discipline of the candidate, so macam saya dalam geotechnical, so saya banyak ambil courses and seminar, saya attend talks uh, dalam geotech, okay, <coughs> and then kat sini ada untuk uh, ni adalah CPD um, bila you jadi all registered PE kena uh, subjected to obtain eh. kita kena kumpul uh, 50 hours CPD uh, per year ni um, this one uh, yang 50 ni untuk PEPC untuk PE 25 hours Okay, so this is uh, starting 2006 lah, the enforce ni ya. Eh. And then continual learning or contribution, it can be in the form of technical courses, seminar or talks or contribution towards engineering advancement. Okay, so maksudnya bila you dah jadi professional engineer pun, proses you belajar tu tak pernah stop ya. Eh. Uh, sharing knowledge, um, the, the process will keep continue. Okay, so every year you kena kumpul CPD ni. Kena attend talk, kena share knowledge, kena gain knowledge. Okay. Alright, so yang ini pula teaching in, in, in engineering. Uh, for those uh, dekat UTEM tu yang background dia teaching, uh, nak apply. Okay, teaching in an EAC approved engineering degree program and at least one year teaching in two final two years of the engineering course. So siapa yang background dia, background uh, in academic, okay, contohnya you lecturer, you nak apply PE, okay, so you kena ada uh, requirement yang ni, eh, which is uh, you kena at least one year teaching in final uh, two years of engineering course. Okay, so um, and then have an equivalent of one year practical engineering experience and uh, can be cumulative, okay. So kumulatif ni maksudnya bila you ada practical engineering experience sebab tu uh, kalau you tengok experience saya, saya jadi lecturer lepas tu saya keluar uh, jadi uh, industrial apa um, uh, apa technical training industrial engineer tu. Dia dia kena keluar. Okay. Tapi dia cakap kat sini can be kumulatif. So tak semestinya direct you keluar setahun, dua tahun. Ada orang Uh, tiga bulan cuti atau tiga bulan dia pergi LI lepas tu dia mengajar balik lepas tu uh, cuti sen tiga bulan lagi ada yang kumulatif macam tu pun boleh juga okay and then uh, have more than three years experience <coughs> for above uh, may also include postgraduate study or research while holding the teaching post so kalau uh, yang mana sambung uh, PhD atau uh, buat post, uh, sambung master degree pun dikira sebagai three years experience ni. Okay, atau you ada research work pun boleh masuk sekali. Alright, so um, basically we have, inter, uh, bila you jadi professional engineer dengan IEM, BEM ni, so kita ada international affiliate affiliation dengan international registers of engineer we have ASEAN and APEC uh, international PE 
So kalau you tengok kat sini ASEAN Engineering Register dengan <coughs> APEC ya. Eh. So kita ada uh, ASEAN Engineering Register AER. So objektif dia to provide a complete data of practicing engineer within ASEAN with the ultimate purpose of facilitating uh, their mobility within ASEAN ambit and to uh, establish a framework of mutual recognition of qualification in order to allow engineer who wish to practice outside their home country to carry with them a guarantee of ability. So ada banyak kat sini lah dia punya objective eh, to provide sufficient uh, formation <coughs> to encourage <coughs> continuous updating to promote cultural and professional link and to enhance wealth creation process of ASEAN countries. <coughs> so kat sini uh, bila you dah professional engineer um, then um, your opportunities going to at international level uh, greater. So kat sini uh, kalau nak mohon jadi ASEAN engineering register these are your requirement. Okay kena ada engineering degree Lepas tu kena full time member of engineering uh, association. Maksudnya you kena belong to BM <coughs> atau <coughs> IEM. And then have a minimum seven years postgraduate uh, working experience in an engineering environment. So lebih daripada tujuh tahun. Okay. So kenapa you nak uh, jadi ASEAN engineer pula? Okay. So it is actually for bigger market for expertise, better employment prospect and then a uh, greater avenue for sharing of knowledge, expertise and technology, increase related business potential and wider networking and strategic <coughs> alliances. Okay, so uh, starting 2009, uh, kita ada ASEAN government that have agreed to register ASEAN Chartered Professional Engineer under ACPE. So, bila you join IEM, semua ni ada. Okay. So, we have this ASEAN Federation of Engineering Organization under AFIO and ASEAN Engineering Register AER. So, basically, IEM sekarang, uh, we are currently the secretariat under this AFIO. Okay, and also uh, we um, have linkages with the Federation of Engineering Institution, Asia and the Pacific, FEIAP. IEM was appointed the permanent secretariat in 2007. Okay, so kita ada kat sini international register under APEC, ada IPEA. So semua ni adalah uh, international uh, registered uh, yang uh, you can uh, join okay uh, when you become professional engineer okay and this is at international level okay so dia ada criteria dia lah untuk you join uh, and you have this title APEC engineer okay and as you can see these are the countries that uh, apa join this APEC uh, engineer member okay uh, by uh, you think Australia, Canada, Chinese Taipei, Hong Kong, China, Indonesia, Japan, Korea, Malaysia, New Zealand, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and US. Okay. So this is inter-institution cooperation. So kita ada IES, uh, Institution of Engineers Singapore. And then kita ada IEEE, Okay, uh, Institution of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, USA. Kita ada Institution of Engineer Pakistan. Kita ada IET, uh, Institution of Engineering and Technology, UK. Kita ada Institution of Engineer Bangladesh. American Society of Civil Engineer and Institution of Civil Engineer, UK, ICE. Okay, so ni antara inter-institution cooperation yang ada bersama dengan IEM. Okay, uh, and lots more lah kat sini. Okay, uh, saya tak baca dah semua. Alright, now uh, I'm look, I'm into the concluding remarks. So basically, uh, saya, uh, when I join the IEM uh, as uh, asalnya, I'm joining them starting as observer dulu. 
join and then lama-lama uh, jadi secretary jadi uh, and now I am the vice chairman so ni antara aktiviti yang yang uh, saya buatlah bersama dengan uh, women engineer okay so this is when we attend the CAFIO 37 in Indonesia okay uh, so uh, every year akan ada event ni ya Uh, so this is um, uh, last 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 two years, okay. So as engineer, okay. So this is engineer. Eh? So we learn, we inspire, we grow, we build, we innovate, we create, we lead, and we discover. Okay, all of this is the criteria that you have to uh, have as engineer. Okay, uh, and uh, people rarely succeed unless they uh, unless they have fun in what they are doing. Okay, so for those of you yang sedang pursue uh, degree in engineering and want to become the engineer and professional engineer, so you have to do to love what you do. You 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 can enjoy, have fun. Uh, yes, uh, obtaining the degree um, is tough, okay, tapi uh, you kena enjoy okay? and nanti bekerja sebagai engineer pun kena enjoy, okay, and I have a little advice here, I hope um, you all can pay attention, we are almost over now, dah nak habis dah, cuma saya ada little advice yang saya memang nak share dengan semua orang, Okay, I hope you can appreciate uh, my advice. Okay, this is personal advice and I hope semua orang boleh pay attention dan dengar ni ya. Eh? One day, a group of friends, very successful in their careers, got together to visit their old university professor. <laughs> After a while, the conversation turned into complaints, all about stress and work and life. The professor, noticing the grumbles, asked if his guest would like a cup of coffee. They agreed, and the professor went to the kitchen and returned with a large pot of coffee and a variety of cups, porcelain, glass, crystal, and some plain looking some expensive and some exquisite. He told them to help yourself to the coffee. When all of the students had a cup of coffee in hand, the professor said, if you noticed, all the nice looking expensive cups were taken up, leaving behind the plain and cheap ones. While it is normal for you to want only the best for yourselves, that is the source of your problems and stress. Be assured that the cup itself adds no quality to the coffee. In most cases, it's just more expensive and in some cases even hides what we drink. What all of you really wanted was coffee, not the cup. But you consciously went for the best cups and then began fighting each other over the cups. Consider this, guys. Life is the coffee. The jobs, money, position in society are the cups. They are just tools to hold and contain life. And the type of cup we have does not define nor change the quality of life we live. And by concentrating only on the cup, we fail to enjoy the coffee. The happiest people don't necessarily have the best of everything. They make the best of everything. So live simply, love generously, speak kindly, and care deeply. Enjoy your coffee.
Okay. Um, so that's all. Thank you so much. Um, so this is uh, my email. Okay, and this is I email I M web portal. Uh, and email address. Um, with that, thank you so much. Okay, okay. Um, thank you, Madam Faiza, for a very interesting topic, very interesting uh, about IEM and a lot of things we can know about the IEM. Okay, so now we will begin our Q&A session. So everyone who, ha who have a question, you can just uh, unmute your mic and ask or drop your question at the chat box. But here I have lots, okay, here there is lots of question. Okay. <laughs> let me read it. Okay, let me read it first. Um, the first question is from Zaim Zafran. Okay, his question is, I'm already re registered of BEM, now on progress of registering on IEM. However, IEM asks for recommender. How to get the recommender? Okay, recommender ni uh, sesiapa sahaja um, ahli dalam IEM dia boleh jadi recommender ni. Um, uh, actually, you boleh you boleh um, apa um, send an email. Okay, you boleh <coughs> minta dia ada banyak cara sebenarnya. Um, sesiapa sahaja kalau you kedal uh, yang ada PE tu atau you tahu dia adalah ahli IEM, you can ask them to become dia, dia macam penyokong. Apa uh, dia dia uh, suggest. Okay. <coughs> you can actually email them, ask them to uh, uh, apa support with that sebab sekarang semua digitalize. Tak silap saya dia through email sahaja. So that person kalau dia agree, then uh, IEM tak silap saya akan hantar link kepada person yang agree tu. So bila uh, kalau person yang agree untuk jadi apa seconder atau untuk untuk jadi approver tu, dia akan just click the link and that's it. Okay, so uh, yang ada problem macam tu, you have to gauge with the with the person. Ini dipasang sendiri yang bersalah. Okay. Nah, nama kita mana senyap? I think someone has unmuted the mic. Uh, okay, let me mute it. Okay, uh, so the next question is student or graduate member got annual fee or one-time registration fee? Untuk mm, student. Untuk student. Untuk student, um, one time fee atau annual fee? Yes. Kalau tak silap saya, dia adalah annual fee. Saya tak pasti pula uh, kalau dia adalah one time. Tak silap saya, dia annual fee. Annual fee. Mm -mm. Okay. Okay, baik. So, ada daripada Afifah. Dia tanya... If I was graduated in electronic but want to apply PE in electrical since I working in electrical field, it is applicable? Okay. Um, okay. Setiap kali saya bagi talk ni mesti ada case yang macam ni kan. Alright. <laughs> Dia macam ni. First kali bila you submit you punya document, um, Bila you submit tu, dia akan ada komiti yang akan go through. First kali dia akan check, dia akan check degree you dulu. Degree you daripada mana. <coughs> so, kalau you kata degree you, uh, tapi you apply macam um, sebab you akan dapat PE tu based on your degree. Faham tak? Hmm, okay. Ah, So, kalau kata macam degree you elektronik tapi you nak apply PE, uh, in electric, electric, is it macam tu case dia yes. tadi? Yes. Uh -huh. ah, 
So saya rasa you akan be award berdasarkan degree you Bukan berdasarkan you punya experience tu Tapi um, saya kurang pasti tentang perkara tu uh, mm-hmm. in depth Mm-hmm. Tapi uh, generally sebenarnya boleh You boleh sebab you will um, Bila you submit the experience apa semua tu uh, Akan ada uh, person yang kena endorse Yang sign your, your punya application and so on tu kan So you boleh cuba okay, Tetapi uh, the secretariat yang overview your document okay, the, the Documentary review tu Dia akan dia akan beritahu sama ada your application tu valid atau tidak. Okay. And dia akan beritahulah kalau uh, valid. So, uh, apa PEU dalam dalam, uh, dalam bidang yang mana. They, they were actually uh, uh, apa brief uh, apa akan beri explanation yang lebih detail lah on that part. And why they decide that. Uh, hello Madam. Uh, saya Afifah yang tanya soalan tu. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, if in this stage, uh, saya uh. nak confirmkan idea saya kena maybe uh, tambah kena ada cost untuk electrical untuk dapatkan PE electrical ataupun boleh proceed dengan degree elektronik. Uh, macam mana saya nak contact sekretariat tu untuk confirmkan application saya dengan uh, degree elektronik ni boleh pas atau tidak? Uh, actually you boleh call IEM terus Kalau you sekarang you mohon tu melalui IEM ke Atau uh, you mohon melalui apa? Uh, saya belum register under IEM Tapi dah register under BEM Jadi saya akan masuk under BEM lah Okay you register dekat BEM Dia um, uh, you punya cert BEM tu uh, under uh, Maksud saya cert yang BEM keluarkan You dah ada graduate engineer tu ke? Ada, ada. Okay, you dah ada. So, dekat situ dia buat dalam kurungan elektrik, elektrik ke elektronik? Elektronik ikut uh, cert degree. Yes. So, sebab tu saya cakap, you punya PE dia akan ikut yang tu. Uh-huh. Ah, So, kalau suddenly sekarang you nak PE tu dalam, bukan dalam elektronik, you nak dalam elektrik kan? Uh-huh. Saya rasa tak possible. Tapi you boleh ask them. Okay, saya kena tanya sekretaria anda BEM lah kan? Ah, uh, you boleh tanya uh, dekat IEM pun dia ada dia ada pihak uh, dia ada uh, this uh, apa documentary reviewer ni dia orang ni yang uh, menetapkan sama ada boleh tak boleh macam tu tau. So dekat BEM pun sama ada. So you have to refer to them. Okay, okay. Ah, uh, sebabnya kes you ni memang kes yang uh, setiap kali saya bagi talk ni mesti akan ada yang Uh, uh, kes yang macam ni Where uh, background lain Tapi dia nak PE dalam uh, Yang lain So jawapan saya uh, Bukan tak boleh you nak mohon tu Memang boleh tapi uh, Nanti by the end of the day Dia akan put in uh, Dia apa same as Mention dalam you punya uh, Cert tu mm-hmm. <coughs> Okay Faham um, Puan Ah uh, okay so you please refer kepada uh, pihak yang uh, yang you nak apply ni lah sama ada IEM atau BEM. Okay, thank you. Excuse me. Yes. Ma'am, uh, my name Bala. Okay. Ah uh, pun uh, saya tengah belajar dekat uh, Open University sebab uh, management, degree dalam oh. management. Okay. Tapi saya nak uh, nak jadikan sebagai uh, jadi uh, engineer. Tapi saya nak continue di EMA Master dalam engineer boleh pun. Master. You punya, maksudnya you tak ada dalam uh, degree dalam. Management. Degree you dalam management. Ya. Yeah. Building uh, facility management. Facility management. Ah hmm. uh, Okay. Sekarang uh, I nak continue saya master dalam building services. Engineering. Okay, kalau dalam kes you ni, you uh, mungkin fall under um, unrecognized tu ataupun um, apa, you need to top up lah sebenarnya ni. Kan, so you kena, um, tapi saya agak muskil juga kalau you nak sambung dalam engineering, um, I mean master's degree engineering, tapi you tak ada uh, background engineering, saya saya tak pasti macam mana dia boleh terima you. Uh, 
Tak Puan Saya uh, background diploma uh, Building service engineering Diploma Oh diploma diploma in, diploma in building service engineering okay. Sekarang saya uh, dah, dah register sebagai Associate member dalam IEM I see Okay okay uh, So you need to top up then So laluan you adalah laluan yang saya explain On yang top up tadi tu So you kena ada master's degree you tu, you kena pastikan master's degree you tu uh, in engineering. Master degree in engineering, okay Puan. Okay. Uh, Puan, yang kalau saya ada ada uh, TC dalam uh, building building dan building construction dalam main board. Main uh, board? Ah, uh, uh-huh. yang, yang, yang tu ada beza Puan. Ada beza? Yes. m is totally on uh, technologies. Dia tak sama. Okay. Uh, so, yang ini memang totally as engineer. Uh, macam tu. Okay, Puan. Okay. Thank you, Puan. Uh, so, ada lagi soalan. Um, for those uh, from Fazli, to those who graduated from Faculty of Engineering Technology and the program was accredited by MBOT, not ETACBEM, how can we register as graduated engineer? Uh, untuk, dia, dia tadi dia cakap dia adalah engineering technologies, betul? Ah, uh, Dia from uh, engineering technologies, ya. Yeah. Okay, bila dia technologies, uh, bila dia bila dia punya background adalah technologies, eh, perfect, uh, engineering technologies, dia uh, dia bukan dia bukan um, under under macam mana saya nak cakap eh um, dia bukan under EAC lah EAC ni engineering okey maksudnya yang degree mesti dalam engineering baru you boleh apply untuk uh, apa uh, engineer tu lah okey tapi kalau you adalah engineering technologies so dia um, dia under uh, e-tech ok ah. so uh, maksud saya macam ni dia 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 bukan dia under yang itu under technologies oh, okay. yang okay. tadi saya ada sentuh tentang engineering uh, lepas tu technologies tu kan uh-huh. ENGR titik ah. so dia under yang tu dia bukan um, sebab uh, degree engineering dan degree engineering technologies adalah dua benda yang berbeza ah macam tu Hmm. So sesiapa yang ambil engineering technologies Dia tak boleh sama dengan engineering degree ha, Macam tu hmm. so, ha, so kena clear tau yang tu Sebab tadi saya ada nampak dalam yang uh, Yang type dalam uh, Mungkin yang naik-naik pop up kat tepi ni kan Ha-ha. Dia cakap uh, berdasarkan talk sebelum ni uh, Tak boleh sebab degree mesti dalam engineering Yes, you Sebab sebab tu uh, Bila kita nak apply PE Ha-ha. ni Dia akan berbalik-balik kepada degree you tu tau Dia akan uh, assess you punya degree tu dulu sebab tu kalau you tengok root to become uh, the apa uh, MIEM tu atau root to become PE dia akan refer you punya degree tu dulu degree you mestilah you mesti ada degree dalam engineering then it must be accredited ha, itu dia punya syarat minima dia yang mula-mula sekali okey so kalau you tak meet yang itu so you will fall under uh, different group lah case yang lain Okay. Okay, okay. Hmm. So ada lagi banyak ni madam soalan dia. Ya, yeah, saya tahu <laughs> uh, kalau bagi talk yang ini sebenarnya memang macam-macam soalan, macam-macam uh, yang tanya so mana yang dapatlah kita cover. Ada tak uh, lagi? Okay, ada lagi, ada lagi. Saya uh, tanya. Ah, uh, okay. boleh, boleh. Sila-sila. Uh, sila. Assalamualaikum. Uh, saya um Mahimin daripada FPTT. Um, saya ada banyak uh, mendengar daripada kawan-kawan tentang root uh, IEM dengan BEM Based on your experience, yang mana paling uh, yang you boleh advise lah yang terbaik IEM or root BEM? 
Oh, um, sebenarnya first kali dia bergantung kepada preference masing-masing. Macam saya, saya memang dah attach dengan IEM dari awal. Okay, so maksudnya dari zaman student saya, saya dah uh, fully aware dan saya memang member dari zaman student dengan IEM. Jadi bila saya sambung uh, dan saya apply for PE tu, saya tak melihat laluan lain. So saya memang fully utilizing the channel that I familiar with. So saya melalui IEM. Okay, tapi saya aware tentang BEM ni sesudah saya dapat saya punya PE baru saya sedar oh boleh apply melalui BEM and so on and saya lihat uh, a colleague of mine and some of my other friends yang melalui uh, yang apply uh, through BEM tu sendirilah. Apa yang saya nampak um, ada, of course uh, sebab by hearsay ada yang cakap apply uh, directly lebih mudah um, uh, dan apa better uh, jangan jangan apply you know macam-macam lah pada saya um, bila saya uh, memahami uh, the whole process of applying the PE ni you melalui mana-mana channel melalui platform sekalipun uh, ultimately dia adalah berkaitan dengan soal first kali you kena sedar uh, dia berkaitan dengan kalau you meet all the requirement dan uh, you um, apa um, apa candidate yang 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 sepatutnya atau yang yang uh, excel tu eh, excellent tu so you tak perlu risau okey so maksudnya boleh je mana-mana cara pun Okay, by ultimately you akan survive lah the interview and so on you boleh jadi uh, pada saya lah and of course you kena percaya pada soal rezeki juga rezeki ada orang dapat panel yang garang ada orang dapat panel yang strict dan sebagainya so benda-benda macam tu itu di luar daripada kita punya control okay uh, so yang itu kita kena uh, apa hope that we can uh, apa kita dapat panel yang yang serasi dengan kita yang boleh memahami dan evaluate kita sebaiknya lah uh, macam tu so pada saya benda tu uh, uh, benda tu uh, apa a proses yang kita kena lalui tapi bottom line uh, kalau you tanya tadi pada saya since yang mana preference saya saya akan kata uh, go with your heart Kalau you rasa melalui BEM tu lebih selesa dan you telah analyse pro and cons, you rasa you lebih berkeyakinan melalui jalan tu, go for it. Okay, kemudian kes saya, sebab saya dah familiar dengan IEM from the beginning and I fully attach. Okay, so saya, saya no matter what people say pun saya still proceed melalui cara tu sebab itu je yang saya selesa dan saya faham. Okay, so same goes with you. So kalau you selesa dan you dah ada confident, uh, just go for it. Okay, so macam ada orang kata uh, if you go through IEM, it will be challenging. Okay, sebab uh, panel dia uh, from uh, apa different whatever reason lah. Tapi saya tak rasa itu reason. You just go through. So kalau saya sendiri boleh lepas, so I believe everyone can. Tu je. Okay. 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 Hi, thank you. Okay. Uh, no, uh, selamat petang. Uh, nak, saya nak tanya soalan. Okay, silakan. Okay, uh, nama saya Faris. Uh, saya sekarang ni saya bekerja dalam uh, firm uh, consultant lah. Uh, okay. Bahagian civil. Okay. okay. Uh, so, saya nak tanya kat sini sebab uh, saya ni uh, kat pasal ni saya ada assign dua lah iaitu satu sebagai uh, designer and mm -hmm. then uh, satu lagi saya macam kadang-kadang saya turun site untuk solve certain site problem and then mm -hmm. uh, saya pergi jadi uh, saksi untuk test lah test dekat site ke cube test ke apa semua and then mm -hmm. uh, saya attend site meeting, check method statement, check shop drawing so okay. uh, adakah uh, benda tu dikira sebagai site experience Definitely. Betul. Sekarang ni apa yang you lalui semua tu, uh, some of it adalah you punya design experience, some of it adalah you punya site experience. 
Okay. Uh, it's all based on how you report. Sekarang ni, uh, selalunya yang saya nampak uh, graduate engineer atau uh, this all junior engineer ni bila you nak apply PE, yang mana yang kena reject uh, application dia, bila saya tanya kenapa kena reject, dia kata tak cukup. Bila saya baca balik, uh, actually bukan experience tu tak cukup. Tapi is actually um, you how you report tu you you uh, tak report contohnya macam sekarang uh, daripada apa yang you cerita mungkin you letak je experience of work you kata lah tiga tahun empat tahun you letak kat situ kan ha, so okay. bila you delegate dekat situ you just letak je timeline untuk okay daripada kesemua tu berapa you letak untuk side experience berapa you letak untuk you punya design okay So you you akan ambil kumulatif lah so, uh, macam by average kan Projek ni you agak-agak berapa lama you spend masa And then uh, you just make sure bila you report tu uh, Dia dia um, is all about how you report You kena make sure minimum tadi kita sebut 12 bulan betul tak untuk uh, side experience Okay so 12 bulan tu you kena cukup lah 12 mm-hmm. bulan untuk Side experience tu So macam mana nak bagi cukup That 12 bulan So you kena boleh proof kan uh, Untuk yang you terlibat tu You kata ada side meeting Apa benda and so on so on tu Untuk, untuk project tu berapa bulan Contoh Mungkin you allocate 3 bulan Untuk project tu So you state project tu Dengan that task of work Dekat side Apa dia you buat Hmm. Ah, eh, Itu yang you pergi site So ayat you kalau pergi site Dia akan baca relevan tak Betul tak itu kerja-kerja dekat site So daripada yang saya dengar tadi Yes it's true Kerja-kerja dekat site lah tu You witness, you verify Apa semua-semua tu So you kena keluarkan Tunjuk timeline you bekerja Make sure minimum requirement tu dipatuhi Maksudnya uh, you meet the minimum requirement dan dia tak semestinya satu projek tu je So you buat You, you boleh buat kumulatif Okay So tu baru projek tu katakanlah Let's say kat situ je dah 3 bulan 4 bulan uh, So you perlukan lagi uh, Berapa balance uh, Dalam uh, 6 ke 8 bulan lagi kan uh, Projek yang lain pula Projek yang kedua Apa lagi yang melibatkan you pergi site So it's all about reporting Cara you report tu Okay Hint, hint yang paling mudah adalah Make sure provide lebih, jangan kurang. Kalau dia sebut dekat situ 12 bulan, make sure you boleh provide 18 bulan. Nah, macam tu. Provide extra, tak apa. Jangan provide kurang. Okay. Okay. Alright, faham. Okay, terima kasih. Hello. Hello. Assalamualaikum. 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 Saya ada soalan. <laughs> Kalau nama saya Zakuan, saya baru graduate. Okay. Kalau untuk overseas degree punya okay. graduate um, okay. Untuk register BAM ke IAM Dia akan refer ke website MQA atau MQR ke Untuk check accreditation Yes Ya Washington Accord tu macam mana pula Washington Accord adalah uh, semua um, Washington Accord ni adalah badan international yang Yang mana um, uh, Any cert Uh, degree ya, yeah. uh, engineering degree uh, yang diperakukan under Washington Airport ni, so uh, dia 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 uh, contoh lah, saya bagi contoh yang mudah macam uh, degree uh, saya lah dari UITM, okay, program saya di UITM, degree UITM uh, is recognized under Washington Airport, so degree engineering uh, dari UITM boleh kita boleh guna un, untuk apply kerja dekat mana-mana country yang uh, terima Washington Accord cert ni. Okey, terima kasih. Itu, ma- ah, itu maksud dia. So kalau you daripada overseas dan you nak tahu the, that degree is uh, acceptable ke tak, you check um, dia punya accreditation dulu. So biasanya kalau you uh, tak pasti, you just refer kepada BEM, they will check for you. Okay, terima kasih Puan. Okay. Okay. Hello. Hi, Madam. Yes. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, can I can I ask 
for overseas working experience once you graduate in Malaysia, is it still uh, relevant? Yes. And for for us to submit our application of the reports or drawings or any documents is certified by our overseas PE. Uh, okay. Are they acceptable? Uh, but you still need to have the one year experience in the local uh, ex uh, the, uh in, in in the country. I mean, in it's a minimum one year. Yes, in it's Malaysia. a minimum one year. Yes, in Malaysia. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we uh, I mean, we just work one year in Malaysia, and then you are you are you are good to go to register for the PE, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. All right. Uh, Madam, I have a question. Yes. Yes. Perkenaan yang pasal anti crash. Anti crash tu boleh dapat professional engineer juga. Apa dia tak 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 jelas. Apa dia tadi? Yang uncategorized tadi tu kan? Uncategorized. Okay. Ha. Ha -ha. So itu boleh dapat professional engineer juga ke macam mana? Uh, dia boleh tetapi uh, uh, dia, dia boleh nak nak apply tapi in order untuk dia uh, apa um, diterima Okay, untuk apply tu. So, dia kena lalui requirement yang dia minta tu lah which dia kena top up dulu kan. Maaf lah, saya maaf ni sebab hari tu uh, dah lama saya pernah call BM tu untuk tajuk berkenaan ni and dia kata hanya yang uh, dia kata apa yang kata uh, dia kata yang ada sahaja boleh dapat professional engineer tu yang ada title tu je yang kira Uh, orang kata kos yang ada sahaja akan dapat title tu. Macam tu lah lebih kurang. Sebab uh, sebab dia ada implication dia sikit kat situ. Sebab kalau satunya, kalau saya saya tak pasti kes you uh, unrecognized tu, kenapa degree tu tak recognize. Yang tu yang uh, dia dia kena tahu dulu yang tu. And then uh, kalau uh, you still nak proceed, dia akan minta you tambah so you kena further study dulu. Uh, adakah not recognized tu, soalan saya dia akan berbalik kat situ, unrecognized tu adakah you punya degree atau you punya origin tu uh, bukan engineering degree? Kat situ dia akan check kat situ juga. Okay, um, maksud saya kat sini macam soalan balang tadi tu. Uh -huh. okay. uh, dia kan dalam building services sebab saya diploma dulu ambil tu juga. Afterwards sebelum saya masuk degree, Uh, saya call BM dulu untuk confirm kan uh, dalam uh, BM ada tak untuk professional engineer bahagian tu and orang kata tak ada jadi that's why saya lari course lah Okay so uh, sebab tu saya cakap kalau you uh, memang diploma you ambil you ada background engineering betul lepas tu you punya degree you tak ada degree dalam engineering betul bila uh, you tak kan Degree saya sekarang engineering lah yang kira boleh dapatkan IR lah. Ah, betul. Kalau sebab tu dia akan actually um, the whole yang saya cakap ni eh. Kadang saya nak semua orang faham. Bila you tahu nak uh, route to become PE, pro, nak jadi professional engineer tu, dia akan back to your degree dulu. Dia akan tengok balik you punya cert, kalau BEM eh, dia akan tengok balik cert uh, yang graduate engineer you tu, apa dia state dalam tu? Dia akan follow yang tu sebenarnya. Okay, so uh, sebab tu uh, penting untuk you pastikan your degree tu accredited dan degree you tu yang uh, valid lah sebenarnya. So tak Dan uh, macam tadi bila siapa tu cakap dia nak sambung study, ambil master in engineering, saya memang itulah yang dia mesti buat tapi soalan saya saya tak pasti master in engineering yang mana yang boleh terima you punya admission tanpa you ada degree in engineering faham tak maksud saya ah uh, kat situlah tapi um, uh, kalau uh, katalah you tak berpuas hati dengan jawapan saya atau kurang faham you boleh refer directly kepada BEM lah atau IEM untuk penerangan lanjut tentang benda ni. Okay, tapi basic dia sebenarnya aa, macam yang siapa tadi cakap aa, aa, kena ada degree lah dalam engineering. Aa, tadi yang tanya tadi siapa? Fairos? Fa 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 F
<laughs> Nama dia Af Afifah ke? Ke bukan Yang yang tanya yang mana tu? Yang latest tadi ni, siapa? Oh, Afif. yang latest um, Ya, pasal ah. Ima tu tu Ah, yes ah, Siapa nama tadi? Ya, Mio Ah, Mio, okay So, uh, macam you, you dah ada degree So, you are looking forward untuk apply for PE ah. ke? Belum saya still in degree So saya cuma nak fahamkan yang benda tu je lah sebab uh, Saya lari kos disebabkan benda tu Ah Betul sebab kalau you dah faham dari awal You tahu kalau you tak ambil degree dalam engineering You tak boleh pursue kepada you nak dapat PE tu ah, so, ah, so, so sebab tu ada certain, ada certain people bila degree dia lari ya, maksudnya diploma dia dah ada engineering tu tapi bila degree dia buat contohnya engineering technologies contohnya okey then you nak apply PE dia dah tak valid lah untuk PE you dah on technologies okey so ada beza tau kat situ Lepas tu Madam, uh, tadi Madam cakap bila dia buat master maknanya dia terus boleh pergi ke professional engineer tanpa perlu buat orang kata yang tiga tahun bekerja bawah uh, Eh dia. bukan, dengan dia punya master tu baru dia boleh mendaftar sebagai graduate engineer Oh ok baik, faham, faham Ah itu maksudnya dia kena apply master in engineering tu untuk membolehkan dia menjadi graduate engineer, faham tak? Ah Lepas tu baru dia kena kumpul pula experience sebagai graduate engineer tu Panjanglah lagi dia punya stage tu macam tu So cita dia kira kalau kami yang daripada degree daftar je GE Lepas tu tunggu dia lulus then kerja bawah penyelia Lepas tiga tahun buat benda tu buku log tu then siap lah hmm. Ah, bukan siap lah, uh, pull out lepas tu apply interview Okay, okay. Nah, yang tu faham lah, kira je ah, maknanya ah. Daftar GE and tunggu dia lulus ke atau daftar GE tu terus boleh duduk bawah penjadi ke macam mana? Uh, daftar GE lepas tu, uh, le uh, maksudnya proses you, experience you tu uh, Yang itu yang terpulang sama ada you nak ada mentor Atau macam saya dulu, saya tak adalah apply mentor ke apa Just Uh, lalui je jadi jadi bekerja sebagai uh, gradu, apa, graduate engineer tu Sampai habis, sampai saya nak apply baru saya uh, isi balik semua borang Dapatkan tanda tangan sebab <coughs> enforce uh, apa uh, nak dapatkan uh, apa tanda tangan drawing apa semua tu Okay so kalau macam ada orang dia sambil Maksudnya sambil dia buat sambil tu dia prepare dia punya working document So Terpulang pada you lah Assalamualaikum Assalamualaikum Okay nama saya Azrin Okay Okay Puan uh, nak tanya sikit lah eh. Okay uh, saya sekarang bekerja sebagai M&E engineer Okay Okay dia kira salah sebuah orang kata apa main con lah Okay Alright So I'm now pursue to to have the professional engineer lah kan Okay Okay my problem now I nak tanya, kalau nanti masa nak isi how can we complete the document ya? Eh? Uh -huh. um, sebab saya punya task, I mean, I punya work more to orang kata apa, ya yeah, post lah, mechanical and electrical parts lah especially uh -huh. in building grid system uh -huh. So dalam report tu nanti, saya macam saya actually, I um, saya ada register GE, ada electrical So okay. my report, I mean, my document tu nak kena beratkan ke elektrik ke ataupun boleh ke, boleh macam tak kisahlah mechanical lebih, elektrikal lebih ke ataupun macam mana? Dia reporting, you boleh report apa sahaja within your experience. You boleh tulis semua yang you nak letak. Okay. Uh, ada orang dia selektif. Kenapa dia selektif? Sebab dia tahu soalan yang akan ditanya adalah daripada apa you report. Faham tak? Okay. Sebab the, the panel will ask you back based on your report. So, lebih banyak you uh, put in, lebih banyak lah you buka peluang for the panel to ask you deeper and uh, variance type of question. Faham tak? Okay. So, uh, meaning, meaning, meaning meaning the panel will be, apa ni? Dia akan refer pada kita punya work experience apa yang kita report lah. Bukan work experience, maksudnya apa yang kita report dekat dalam kita punya dokumen yang kita submit lah. Betul lah. Eh? 
Ah, uh, uh, you you ada dua report tau yang you sediakan. Satu ni okay. experience. Experience hmm. ni yes. You you akan uh, apa uh, you you spell out lah semua experience you tu. You boleh uh, outline kan semua yang you uh, yang you dah buat project you sama ada electrical ke mechanical ke or combination ke you just uh, list out everything. Yang okay. itu dalam experience. Tetapi hmm. dalam technical report, technical report ni you sepatutnya lebih selektif lah. Technical report ni yang dia nak tanya you deeper ni. I see, I see, I see. So, ah, so technical so report yang, ni, I need to be conscious lah, more conscious kat situ lah. Yes, technical report ni yang dia akan tanya you soalan yang uh, yang masa essay tu, dia akan develop soalan daripada technical report you. I see, I see, I see. Okay. Ah, okay. okay. So, of course then, you... Then, Ah, itu. Ini ini betul. Ah, tu so uh, you 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 first. Betul tak? Cuma. Okay, sama sama. Okay, masa saya sekarang okay. Sekarang dia ada tu dokumen masa saya sekarang ni. Uh, so saya nak beratkan kepada macam saya electrical lah, kepada pada pada electrical. So yang dekat dalam dekat dalam tu technical report, technical report means yang apa dia punya dokumen nak kena apa atau design apa semua tu kan? Eh? Betul lah. Eh? Aha. Okay, so yang, yang apa ni, should I put macam contoh lah masalah dekat side gitu begini um, then masuk masukkan sekali apa yang I propose design macam mana, macam tu sekali lah? Ya? Macam mana? Uh, contoh 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 tentang report tu ataupun just just based on apa apa yang 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 sepatut, yang apa yang I buat je lah masuk macam tu Macam yeah. mana? Uh, kalau kalau you tanya saya, saya hanya report apa saya buat sahaja. Okay. Okay, contohnya masa saya dekat Run Hill tu, of course mm-hmm. projek ada banyak, banyak sangat projek. Tapi tak buat apa saya nak report semua projek yang ada. Memanglah kalau kita report semua projek yang ada, teballah saya punya experience yeah, report tu uh, macam right. macam hebat kan. Tapi yes. itu bukanlah purpose dia. Purpose dia sebenarnya kita patut report apa kita buat sahaja. Jadi, bila saya prepare saya punya report, saya lebih kepada apa yang saya buat sahaja saya report. So, contohnya, kata kalau projek saya, sebab saya Jotek, so saya punya projek tu banyak macam uh, slope stability analysis atau projek yang berkaitan dengan highway, whatever lah yang macam tu, saya akan outline kan semua projek-projek yang saya involve tapi saya akan bagi tahu apa saya buat dekat projek tu contohnya sebab projek ni besar kan gah macam kalau you nak buat building pun adakah saya prov- ah, saya yang apa construct the whole building tak kan mungkin expertise uh, expertise saya cuma saya design foundation saja contoh so saya akan okay. state dekat situ nama projek and saya akan bagi tahu apa saya punya task contohnya uh, check bearing capacity saya design foundation, saya check settlement. So, saya bagi tahu apa saya buat sahaja. Okay. Jadi, okay. panel tu, bila panel tu go through you punya report, dia tahu kalau dia nak tanya you pun, dia akan tanya, oh ni you uh, you design uh, foundation ni, pakai foundation apa eh, yang ni? So, you boleh jawab. Tapi, mm-hmm. kalau saya pandai-pandai cakap, oh saya terlibat dengan projek tu uh, then I stop, maksudnya general macam tu kan so panel okay. tu, dia boleh tembak saya, dia akan tanya yang ini uh, beam tingkat dua uh, bumbung ni, ah uh, dah lepas tu saya pula nak kata, eh saya tak buat bahagian tu you faham tak? Uh, so kat situ dia dah trap, trap you dah so you tak sepatut, you, uh, you patut betul-betul detail you cakap je apa you buat sebab tak salah pun kalau kita tak buat benda tu kan uh, ada orang hmm. lain buat but that's not your work ah uh, macam tu okey lagi satu yang untuk apa namanya um, nak kena ada ref, apa ni um, difference i mean sub under supervision pe kan betul ah uh, betul okey uh, ah ada masalah di eh, mana my pe yang yang supervise saya punya uh, means yang saya deal ni adalah mechanical pe Okay. Okay. Tapi dia dia monitor saya punya projek lah. So, okay. Sebab projek-projek ni ada dia. Okay. So macam mana kalau kalau dalam kes ni maksudnya saya perlukan saya cari kena cari PE electric juga yang untuk untuk jadi supervisor saya ataupun saya boleh maintain dengan dia? Hmm. 
Okey, selalunya kalau uh, kalau saya lah, saya akan maintain dengan dia, dia akan sign sebab dia adalah immediate dan dia yang ver- boleh verify kerja kita sebab directly. Betul. Tapi kalau kata, uh, but you can refer that to the, macam contoh IEM atau BEM, you tanya dekat dia, adakah uh, apa uh, that uh, verification diterima? Kalau dia tak terima, then you have to find yang dalam same uh, discipline tu lah. Tapi yang same discipline tu, you suruhlah dia sign bersama dengan you punya panel tu. Sign bersama maksudnya macam mana Puan? For example, Maksud, I mean, maksudnya I you akan ada dua, dua orang yang akan sign dekat situ. Dua orang yang akan sign. Uh, okay, adakah ianya daripada, oh, maksudnya kawan dia ke, so, sorry yang saya nak tanya, sebab kawan dia ke ataupun anda consultant, anda same consultant, for, for, for example, macam saya kena dengan Mekon kan. Uh, uh, so, siapa, my, my reference I, is my consultant lah, above okay. me. Kalau uh-huh. you tanya saya, saya akan kata sesiapa sahaja uh, tak kisah sama ada uh, kawan dia ke, uh, same company ke, as long as as long as uh, dia dalam uh, bidang tu lah, dalam disiplin tu. Dalam masa ni, sekarang ni kita refer pada untuk disiplin sajalah. Ya. Yeah. Ya. Right? Yeah. Okay, maksudnya kalau kalau dia bukannya kawan ke apa, tapi kalau saya boleh convince ada uh, PE the trick yang boleh bantu saya, means tak ada masalah lah, betul lah? Ah, uh-uh, yes, you you just proceed with that. Okay, so kalau nanti kalau buat submission kan, adakah dari pihak masa I, apa ni, masa apa nak masa nak submit tu, nanti mm-hmm. pihak pihak yang apa evaluator, I mean mm-hmm. daripada sekretari kan akan tanya balik, akan call balik orang ni orang ni macam macam ni dia akan check balik ke ataupun tak kisah? Ah uh, okey sebenarnya ah uh, kat sini yang ah uh, kandidat kena tahu bila kita submit kita ada beberapa kali lah dokumen kita tu diperiksa okey satu sekretariat tu sendiri dia akan verify biasanya biasanya kita tengok kalau ada PE yang dah sign kita tahulah yang ah uh, someone has verified that that work that report okey uh, tapi kalau dia ragu dia ragu-ragu lah dengan Contohnya, you know, orang yang chop ni, dia kenal ke, dia pelik. Kenapa dia ni sign untuk dia ni? Something like that. So, dia mungkin akan ambil langkah untuk call, untuk justify and so whatever lah. Itu dia punya work scope. Dia punya job scope, dia, dia kena tentukan benda tu. And then, bila sampai dekat panel, kalau kata you lepas that documentary reviewer, lepas tu panel pula nak tengok. So, panel tu pula akan tengok. Um, Uh, you punya drawing, you punya tu, dia tengok lah, dia, dia sendiri akan tengok, oh uh, ini you punya immediate boss ke atau uh, yang chopkan you punya ni atau ni client you. Uh, panel tu sendiri boleh bertanya soalan yang macam tu. So you just be true, be frank with them, oh yang ini client, uh, yang ini memang boss saya, uh, tak apa. Okay. So it's either way, uh, sebenarnya uh, syarat you prepare tu, dia nak ada chop tu, betul tak? Betul, betul. Ah, so you just make sure dia ada. So dia nak siasat betul ke macam mana ke terima atau tak dia yang akan maklumkan kat kita. Kalau let's say dia uh, you dah you dah uh, ambil sign sesiapa lah kan chop tu. Katakanlah uh, contoh IEM ni kata uh, tak boleh dia ni sign ni. Ah, contohlah something macam tu dia akan tanya dia akan refer back to you. Uh, dia akan hubungi you, kandidat uh, Can you please uh, Dia akan cakap lah bahagian ni Panel atau reviewer komen uh, Tidak terima chop Dari sekian-sekian ni Can you find, can you update the new one uh, You update lah Balik report tu, you upgrade balik Hantar mengikut apa yang dia minta uh, Macam tu Okay, okay uh, Yang lagi? itu dah, ya, pada ya. saya tu very minor lah Very minor Okay, lagi satu, sekarang supervision under PE Betul untuk untuk okay. untuk apa ni okay. untuk sapu untuk dokumen. Uh-huh. Okay, PE kalau PE without PAPC boleh kan? Boleh. Maksudnya without PAPC boleh kan? Janji janji uh-huh. di PE saja. Ya. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, and then dia the, punya the working experience, I mean dia dia di holding PE berapa lama tu tak kisah kan? Ah, uh, tak Maksudnya kisah. Maksudnya kalau kalau orang baru ke? Ah, uh, tak apa. Boleh eh? Selagi dia willing untuk verify benda tu tak ada masalah. Okay, satu puan yang sekarang ni dengan uh, BM dah launch apa ni um, permohonan PE melalui online betul? Mhm, betul. Okay, yang itu um, 
IEM pakai sistem sama juga ke ataupun macam mana? Atau kalau kalau, kalau katakan saya masuk, saya upload saya punya dokumen semua dekat dekat uh, apa namanya? Uh, my BM. IEM kalau kata saya nama apa ni nak sit for exam mula EPI, which is examination. Hmm. So hmm. nanti hmm. IEM boleh boleh review ke ataupun saya masih lagi kena submit hard copy juga ke uh, IEM? Tak, you select salah satu. Kalau you dah hantar melalui IEM, you tak payah hantar melalui BEM. Kalau you hantar melalui BEM, you tak payah hantar ke IEM. You select satu sahaja. So, sebab uh, BEM, yes, dia dah upgrade sistem dia. Tapi I don't think IEM uh, uh, ada. IEM masih lagi menerima permohonan um, hard copy tu. Hmm. Okay, so um, cuma dia orang, uh, apa, dia dah standard kan uh, the form, the assessment tu dah sama. Cuma mm -hmm. platform, kalau you melalui uh, IEM, dia ada komiti dia. Kalau you melalui BEM, they have their own komiti. Uh, okay, noted, noted. Okay, terima kasih Puan, terima kasih. Alright. Okay, okay, due to the time constraint, um, boleh kita ambil satu lagi last question? Kalau ada, kita boleh ambil. Kalau tak ada, I think it will be the end of session. Okay, last question. Can yeah? I ask one question? Okay. Um, can I ask one more last question? Okay, so um, we are practice in geotechnical uh, field, engineering field. So what happen is now is like um, if we are the one to design the tunnel or the or RC box covered, okay. end of the day, end of the day, are we considered structure or geotechnical? Because we also do the piling and foundation work. You will be okay. considered as civil. Civil. Civil and when we form a company and we want to endorse for geotechnical drawing, is it possible? Is it, yes. is it really because I, I heard that uh, some of my friends, they get PE geo, so they say they cannot endorse for structure drawing, something like that. I don't know, is it true or not? Um, uh, okay, because they got the specific on geotech, geotechnical, is it? Yeah, PE geo, yeah, they, they got a bracket geo there for them. I, they, that's, the, that's what they show me in their stem, yeah. Mm, okay, because uh, basically it's actually, uh, it, it will be back on uh, your application and your background, okay. So, uh, I'm not sure because uh, I think the geotechnical is no longer, uh, we have that specified. Uh, because at, during my time, even though I'm having the Masters of uh, Geotech, but uh, I have to apply, uh, they consider under civil. So my job is civil. So, oh, okay. yeah, so I'm- It's the I, general civil. Yes, it's the general one. But of course, when I, I submit my submission, it's all more on geotechnic because I did all geotechnical work. Yeah. 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 Mm. So uh, I I think the one who have specified for geotechnical, they have a bit, I think some restriction on it. And I'm not sure. Uh, I, I think it's not a common case. Uh, okay, because I, I'm just worried when the, when we submit this kind of things and then if we end up get PE in geo and then it's like, uh, we are not relevant to structure. <laughs> Just end up something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that is true because oh. uh, uh, that is true because you only uh, you are only entitled for geotechnical scope of work. Okay, so that's yeah. why. Uh, yeah. So that's why. Uh, even when my time when I apply this, uh, I I try if they have only geotech, I want to go to that direction, but they don't have it. They mm -hmm. actually will go back to your degree. Uh, they will see your background. If your degree is uh, in civil, civil, so yeah, uh -huh. so you will entitle the PE in civil. So that's how it goes. Okay. Thank, uh, thanks for your clarification. Yeah. Thank All you. right. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. So I believe that's the last question. Okay. There is no more question available right now. 
jadi um, before that uh, my friend already shared a QR code uh, no the forms for feedback so please fill up the form uh, and give a feedback about our session today okay so for participant who has who haven't registered as IEM member yet uh, you can uh, go to the IEM IEM social media and just scan the QR code given and it will lead to you, it will lead you to the registration link so uh, you guys can follow all the steps given in the social media and then yeah, you can become uh, our member as like uh, Madam Norfaiza said. In IEM, we have lots of opportunities, lots of advantages and lots of, of opportunities for uh, student engineering students like us uh, and engineer to engineer and so on. We can communicate with them. We can, uh, we have a course and uh, course training, we have uh, publication, even we have the loyalty card that give us rebate. So it give us a lot of advantages. So um, who haven't uh, registered yet, please register the uh, here at the screen. Okay, how to register the IEM student member. So you can register here. Follow this all this step and then become the IEM member. Okay. That's all. Uh, and the registration will be open uh, from now until uh, 6th of June. Okay. Um, Madam. Okay. Uh, can you share the slide with us? Yeah, sure. Uh, I will. I will send it to you. Um, maybe through WhatsApp. Ah, okay. Okay. Okay, okay, madam. So, uh, last but not least, uh, before we end our program today, I hope, uh, all to all the participants untuk, apa tu, untuk switch on the camera untuk sesi foto gambar. Untuk sesi bergambar. Jadi, bolehlah, uh, on kan camera untuk ambil gambar ramai-ramai. Okey, ada lagi ke? Okey. Ramai lagi, ramai lagi. Okey. Okay, so kira sampai 1, 2, 3 and then senyum, okay? 1, 2, 3. Okay, okay, one more, one more freestyle, freestyle. Okay, 1, 2, 3. Okay, okay, nice. Everyone's so supportive. Okay, thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's wrap for our webinar for today. Thank you to all who attend the Route to a Professional Engineer webinar this afternoon. It's been our pleasure to host this event and I wish you all the best for today and have a pleasant day. Jangan lupa untuk jaga diri, jaga SOP, dan yang paling penting, jaga diri. Okay? Thank you. All right. Stay safe. Sampai raya semua. Bye. Bye, Samaraya. Samaraya, Samaraya. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Samaraya. Terima kasih. Okay, thank you everyone. Selamat Raya, terima kasih. Uh, sorry, Ali. Uh, nak tanya hmm. slide macam mana eh? Please, nak share? Uh, slide tu... 
I think our organizer will email untuk semua dengan recorded uh, webinar ni. Ah uh, recorded webinar ni pun I think it will attach together. Okay. Uh, we will upload this to our YouTube account ini. Ah uh, yes. Ah uh, okay, this recorded uh, session will be uploaded uh, at our YouTube channel. Uh, Hadi, may I know the YouTube name? Uh, I am UTEM student section. Uh, I am UTEM student section. So the video will be uploaded to the I am stu UTEM student section YouTube channel. Okay, thank you. All right. So uh, you need to do uh, what ni I am punya student lah. Yes, I am I am punya student. UTEM student. Uh, okay. So yang tadi tu kira nak daftar dia memang Saya nak cakap uh, IM punya tu dia punya tu year fee lah eh? Ah uh, a year fee Bukan one time lah uh, Bukan Actually no 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 actually one time Eh one untuk student uh, eh Untuk student one time Ah uh, untuk student one time Sorry sorry so, Tapi dia berbeza dengan GE punya pendaftaran kan Hmm Actually, kalau kita student members, I am for more than one year, we can get discount to upgrade our membership to graduate graduate uh, member. That's why uh, that is one of uh, advantages lah kalau kita jadi student members of I am. Alright, so kiranya tapi dia punya price kind of less kalau kita punya year. Uh, boleh refer, actually uh, our committee dah dah prepare a very comprehensive guidebook. Semua ada information uh, boleh boleh scan yang dekat yang, yang saya tadi. Okay. Ini ada website sendiri atau macam mana? Untuk, Apa dia? Untuk UTEM punya. Uh, UTEM kita ada student section UTEM lah. Uh, student section UTEM tu maknanya nak google ke I, IEM UTEM student section ni ke? Uh, atau boleh boleh tengok kita punya Instagram dengan Facebook. Uh, all information will be and kita also ada uh, broadcast ramai ni lagi nak join kenapa ni uh, uh, kita kita ada broadcast group uh, on whatsapp and telegram also yes um, boleh right. boleh tengok ah uh, uh, please follow us on our social media lah because uh, most of our info will be there dekat facebook adalah untuk telegram ni tempat join dah uh, ada 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 eh alright uh. okay thank you Alright. So, uh, tak ada kan? Uh, mohon all the participant to left this meeting room sebab uh, program dah habis. So, ah, uh, Hadi already share our Instagram link, so you can just ah. Uh, Buka tu, okay? 